Hey YouTube, welcome to the Off Grid Mountain Homestead. Today I'm off the homestead with Southern Prepper One working on his backup water system. So he gave you a rundown of everything in the system. I'm going to go over it in a little bit more detail, show you what components you'll need to set up a system similar to his. Go over everything that you, you'll need. So let's get started. All right, we're starting outside. Got 400 watts of solar right here. Two 200 watt panels wired in series on a movable rack. These are rich solar panels. They are 200 watts, VMP of 20 volts, and max current of 9.8 amps. So these are series together to get a higher voltage, lower amperage. Does a little bit better on collecting sun in series versus parallel. And they're on a movable mount, a power fab tilting ground mount. So you can adjust the angle or the direction, cardinal direction of your panels to optimize your collection throughout the day. So if you're you know, in a spot that gets minimal sun or this, you know, in a, a wooded spot that you only get a, a few hours here and a few hours there, you can put a movable mount to help collect more sun, more power during the day. And they're series together, then they come to a fuse link. They're fused before they enter the PV disconnect. And they also have a midnight solar SPD surge protection device on it. So Southern Prepper 1 does not have to worry about these panels getting blasted by lightning. So we got the suppressor on there. And this is the disconnect. So, you know, if a bad storm's coming and you don't quite trust your surge guard, you can just come out here and pull the, pull the disconnect. And then your panels are dead, so no lightning can come into your system. All right, from the solar panels come in through this junction box. Uh, it's got conduit underground. So it comes into this junction box and has seal tight flex going up to the main fuse block. That's all the connections are made in here to keep them nice and clean. And it branches off to the loads with SJOW cord. And it's all secured to the wall. Southern Prepper 1 went with a Renergy Rover charge controller, capable of 40 amps. Uh, we're not quite pushing 40 amps through it. We wanted some, some headroom in the charge controller and mounted to a eight by eight box. And all the holes for the charge controller to keep the wiring concealed were matched to this junction box. So you don't have any exposed wire in there for anybody to come grab or you know any varmints to get in there. So that's all closed up and sealed. And there's a Blue Sea Systems fuse block inside this junction box. And it's got the fuse protection links to the simple pump and the boost pump and also main fuse block protecting from the batteries. So if something goes wrong, this, this system is fused everywhere. So then we come over to our switches, just a four by four J box and some generic 30 amp switches. And they control the booster pump and the simple pump. So when you activate either one of them, the simple pump comes on, starts filling the tank. So it's manual control for now. So manually controlled, but Southern Prepper 1 hasn't decided if he wants to go with the traditional float switch in here with a set of contacts to shut the pump off when the tank's full or if he wants to go with a electric uh, style shutoff switch. So that's still under debate, but for now he's using manual mode on it, which is just fine. And then the boost pump ties in uh, to his existing plumbing and fills the tanks. So it's just like having your regular well pump on and you wouldn't even know the difference. So here's the going down on the system, showing you all the components. Here's the main disconnect for the batteries. So this is the main shutoff when you, you, know, you run into an issue or you need to service everything, you just kill that and you know everything's off for the system. And it's being powered by two Power Queen 200 amp hour 12 volt batteries. They're wired in parallel. So he's got uh, each battery's 2.5 kilowatts and change. So his total capacity is a little over five kilowatts worth of juice in these batteries. So if he didn't have sun for two or three weeks, he could probably still run his water. And this is a lot of juice running these two little pumps. These pumps, when they're on, they're just minuscule amounts of power drawing this monster battery bank right here. And that's why I love this system. He's put a huge battery bank in, which is nice. You don't have to have one this big. You can have you know, a little 100 amp hour AGM and you know, 99% of the time, that's going to get you by for, you know, two or three days if you had a system like this. You don't have to spend as much money on these batteries and get this big of a system. But he likes redundancy, so he went with two monster batteries. 
And the batteries are both fused at the positive terminals with the blue C fuse blocks. They're rated for the size wire. They're 60 amp fuses. So anything goes wrong, the fuse pops and everything's safe. And worst case scenario, he's always got the backup hand pump for the simple pump. So you just bolt it in right here, take this 12 volt motor assembly off and you can still have water. Even if all this stuff failed or got smoked, you still have water. So a simple pump is an awesome well pump. And this simple pump is pulling water from 100 feet below the surface. The static water level on this well averages 25 feet. So this is sitting down, you know, it's got 75 foot of water column to work with in this well. It has no problem bringing it up 100 foot to the surface. Now I'm going to get a little action shot of this simple pump running. Come over and twit, hit the switch. You can see how it works. So it uses a roller cam inside on a special J arm that lifts lifts the sucker rods up and builds its pressure. And the booster pump for this system is an Aquatech pump. And Aquatech makes multiple different sizes, shapes, voltages, I mean everything you want in a pump. And Aquatech is a very, very reliable pump. I've seen these and used these, serviced these in commercial applications on large large water systems and, and plants and stuff, you know, for research pumps and various other things. So I recommended the Aquatech to Southern Prepper One. And I believe he is 100% satisfied with this Aquatech. It's low power draw, it's quiet, and just a very reliable bulletproof pump. This is a 12 volt pump, and it's got a built-in pressure switch right here on the end of the pump, 40 to 60 PSI. So when your pressure drops below 40 PSI, the switch engages the contacts, Bring the pump on until it goes up to 60 PSI, and then it shuts off. Just like your well pump switch, your regular pressure switch on your well pump. So to do something like this with an existing well, you have to add in a check. You have to put a check valve in if you don't already have one in your, in your plumbing system. So it comes out of the well casing and goes to this check valve, and then the booster pump feeds back in on this hose bib. So if that simple pump and boost pump are running and his main 240 volt well pump is off it can't push against the well casing all the way down so it doesn't stress the foot valve on the existing pump so it's completely it's completely isolated from putting any pressure on that pump to save his foot valve so it pushes in right here it can't go towards towards the casing because of the check in it and it just goes down into the house and filling those pressure tanks it's just like a regular well pump if you were in one of the houses, you would not know that you were on a booster pump or on the well pump. So it works that good. And Aquatech is made in the United States of America. Hard to find pumps made in the USA nowadays. Another good reason to go with Aquatech. Here's a close up of the Aquatech pump. It's the same that's used right there in the system. This is a spare. It's a demand delivery pump, 550. You can see the model number right there. 5.3 gallons a minute, 12 volt, 18 amps at 60 PSI. So that's a basic rundown of this system. And one more thing I wanted to make a note of too is, you know, you can you can run the, the garden hose set up like this. It's quick, easy, down and dirty. Or you can plumb it in with PVC or PEX, but you'll need some braided stainless steel fittings on your pumps because they're not solid mounted, they can move. And the way the simple pump pulses, you would need a braided stainless coupling to absorb the shock from the pump as you can see it's moving. So you would need braided stainless if you was doing rigid pipe. One more walk through the system, show you all the components again. Remember the solar panels are outside on the tilt mount tank, lithium iron phosphate batteries, all the shutoff switches, fuse blocks, safeties, charge controller, Simple pump, boost pump, and all the necessary plumbing to complete the project. As you see, there's a lot of moving parts here. It does cost money. 
I try to make everything affordable, but there's a lot of parts that my buddy could have gave me that were so much more expensive, more name brand. I had to go more on a budget build. There's some of you might say, Dave, this is way past my budget. Well, we're going to show you some ways where you could do it if you're on a well or if you're connected to regular city water, ways you can do and get some pressurized water in your house. We'll show you that in another video. There is hope for you at a very great reduced cost. You don't have to have all these components, um, but we'll show you that in another video. So that's a rundown of Southern Prepper 1's backup off-grid water system. So I hope you enjoyed today's video, and a big thanks to Southern Prepper 1 for let me help him on this project. So thank you for watching the Off Grid Mountain Homestead. Signing off. Stay tuned. Like, comment, subscribe.